60. Tots of the opening leg. Now double 10. Game shot. And it's the in the leisure leg. of Eddie Idam too. Idams is back for the break and a 2 0 lead. It's going to be a dart at tops. Game and it's going to be a 2 0 lead for Eddie Idams. Running at around about an 83 and a half average after a couple of legs. One dart or a double so far in this match. His second one is going to be at the ball. 20. That might be his last. Rene requires Because Rene Idams now returns for double 16 to complete a whitewash victory in his debut match at the Moda Super Series. Game And the cube and is the on the board. Rene Idams gets the better of Steve Brown by four legs to nil to seal a debut success here at the Super Series. An average just under 86. Four out of ten when it came to the doubles. A solid enough start to... Proceedings here for Rene Idem. Steve Brown, work to do as the day goes along. It's an all Luxembourgian battle up next as Tom Becker takes on Jim Mayer. A bit of pedigree in class here as well. Game shot on the second leg. We talk about pedigree in class. The most important thing about a game of darts is hitting the doubles, and both of these done it with just one Third leg. Dart. It's Tom's and so to seal a debut success, perhaps ironic, in Wimbledon season, Game Becker shot is a winner. Match. Tom, Tom Becker. Becker gets the better of Jim Mayer by four legs to one. He wins the Luxembourgian battle. A 4-1 success, an average of 80. Four out of 15 on the doubles, but really caveat that from one squiffy leg in the middle of proceedings. Becker then... Gets off the board, on the mark. And after the break, we're going to see a man who made it to Champions Week last time out. John Worsley in action up against Davy Kerwin after this. Davy requires now it's time 20. To hope. But his hope, just a four-letter word. Game yes, shot is the answer the because Davy Kerwin seals a 4 0 victory against John Worsley. It's the perfect debut as far as the Scots is concerned. There is still work to do well for both players, but, but Davy Kerwin, he's got a victory in his first game in this competition. It's a platform of which he can build upon. And so the end of the first round has seized here. And coming up after the break, Steve Brown is in action. He takes on Tom Becker. This is for the match. Game, shots, and the match. And that is a win Steve for Steve Brown. Brown by four legs to two. He's on the board, getting the better of Tom Becker by that particular scoreline. And so after that 4-0 defeat against Rene Idams, only one in the day, Steve Brown is into the winner's enclosure. 4-2 victory for him. Next up, two players who won 4-0 on their debut earlier on today. David Kerwin is taking on Rene Idams after this short break. 64. Rene required 95. The story of this game so far is an absolute domination from the player with the dart. Double 19. Game one, shot one. on the second 15 leg. dart of Rene Idams. Idams. We're incrementally getting better in this game. 16 dart hold in the first. 15 dart hold in the second. Rene requires 65. So to confirm the break of throw, put himself a leg away. Back-to-back -back victories. Game this is a good start play. here from Rene Idem. Idem. Not on this occasion. Rene required 32. And so Rene Idams to go two from two. Wants 32. To win 4-2. Game shot. And there it is. And Rene the Idams goes back-to-back -back Idem. at the Super Series. A 4-2 success against David Kerman. Another average in and around that low to mid-80s mark. 83.79 in the end. Couple of maximums, 50% on the doubles. Many items is playing at a proficient enough level. He currently goes top of the table. The only player two from two up to press. Coming up after the break, Jim May and John Worsley are both looking for their first wins. 100. Quite the achievement as he goes for a ton to win the opening leg here. Tops, tops. No, decides for the treble for double 10. Game shot on the first one nil May at 18 Jim darts. Meyer. That was done in. He requires 78. Game shot on the fifth That's leg. a nice clean finish Jim there Meyer. from Jim Meyer. He's got an opportunity to come back.
for 35 for the match. It's two 16s. Game and it's a win for Worsley. Match, he gets Worsley. himself in the winner's enclosure, getting the better of Jim Mayer by four legs to two. Doing so, the much improved upon 84 average. Five of 11 on the doubles. That will be much happier performance as far as John Worsley is concerned. Following his opening salvo against David Kerwin. So, we are two rounds of fixtures down for the day. Coming up after the break. We're going to kick off round three with Brown and Kerwin. 80, it's there for the taking. It's there for the opportunity. And that was the word I said Game at the very start the of the day. Leg. And they're the Steve opportunities Brown. that are going to make the difference. A 106 finish there from Steve Brown. A 15 data. Davey requires 70. Davey is yet to have a data, a double in this match. We'll get two. I mean, two at double Game eight. He only on the needs the one. Leg. Davey Kerwin. Could be it. Steve 40, 40 for the match for Steve Brown. Tops of Brown. Game Victory shots for Brown. And, the match, and it Steve puts him Brown. onto four points. Two wins from three. And he's getting better as the games go along. He gets the better of David Kerman by four legs to one. Doing so an average just under 85. For one of eight when it came to the finishing. And so Steve Brown moves up to second place in this embryonic league table. Next up, Tom Becker up against John Worsley. Tommy the big Razzmatazz walk on. And all the excitement. And then when they come back after the break, they can't really find it. But Tom is finding. Game shot on the first Finds the way. biggest finish we've seen Tom so Becker. far. The one five seven, And he's got six from here. Okay, the casual double 10, double 11 Game split. Game shot on the fourth leg. And hit. John Worsley. Put a flake in it, John Worsley. In down to the treble 17. He will not find it. So Tom Becker will come back with three darts in his hand to serve John Worsley. His second defeat of the day. 107. Tommy required 32. And importantly for him, it'd be a second win of the day. Game and that is found, and, and that's a 4-1 win Becker. for Tom Becker. John Worsley, the favourite going into Group A, has got a little bit of work to do. A 4-1 defeat to Tom Becker. A 1-5-7 finish, really changing the course of that match in Tom Becker's direction. He beats John Worsley by four legs to one. He moves on to four points. Coming up after the break, Mede Items are going to keep up his 100% record in the group. If he can get the better of Jim Mayer, who's looking for his first win of the group. Idan's back for the 73 for 2 nil. He's going to get a couple. Two eights. Two Game nil. Sean the second Idan's gets the break. Rene Idan's. Rene, you require 102. Are these going to be the final throws of the match? Idan's for 4 nil victory. Double 16 Game to make it three wins on three. And many items. items tills a second 4-0 victory in three. He is becoming the dominant force when it comes to this group A on the opening day. The 4-0 success gives Jim May another average in that 80 region, 81.24. That 102 checkout to finish and four out of nine when it came to the finishing. Work to do for Jim Mayer. He is getting cut adrift a little bit at the bottom of the table. Coming up after the break, it's going to be his compatriot Tom Becker in action. He takes on Davy Kerwin. That's the bullseye here Davey for a two on lead. Just about in. The red bit, on the, third it. the middle Davey of the Kerwin. diddle does solve the riddle for Davy Kerwin. Tom Becker, who has been so good on the finishing, is going to have a dart at double eleven to win it. Game absolutely shot. incredible, Tom Becker. It was the Becker's call. As he gets the better of David Kerwin for free with two top plus finishes, which to boot included a 1 2 4 to win it. Absolutely incredible. Tom Becker, six points to his name, three wins from four. Coming up after the break, Jim Mayer takes on Steve Brown.
especially when you've got crossovers of groups in there as well. Game shot on the second low. Double, double Steve 19. Brown. Steve Brown loves those rascal finishes. Oh, yes. We love a bit of Four that. Chips. Steve Jim Mayer. Mayer. 24. As for Steve Brown, Game that's a hat trick of wins. Steve Brown. It's a 4 1 win against Jim Mayer. And after that opening defeat to NA Items, Steve Brown has won three in succession and has posted the highest average of the day so far an 88.27 average. Four out of eight when it came to the finishing, including that classy 95, which included two double 19s in the process. Steve Brown is a 4 1 victor against Jim Mayer. Coming up after the break is the top of the table unbeaten man, Renny Idams in action. He takes on Jonathan Worsley. Tots are 2-2. Two, two. Game shot. And that time play. it is pinned with a plot. Renny Idams finds the perfect setup play to leave 32. John Worsley looking for a Nelson. Aye, aye, aye. Game shot on the field. Ike Arumba, as far John as Idams is concerned. Worsley with the 111 to lead 3 2. Did you see John Jonathan Worsley's 68. face? It lit up. Because you think 16 or 8, you're going to be facing a dart against you at the double. Not on this situation. His Game eyes lit shot. up and his face and will be smiling John now. Worsley. Bit of an apology there. Something we would call a mason these days. But John Worsley stops Rene Idem's perfect day. And a 4-2 success there for John Worsley. He keeps himself in the mix and he'll be happy to see those low-ton finishers once again coming back. The 1-11, the highlight of the match for Worsley. But coming up next, we've got Jim Mayer taking on Davy Kirkwin. You require 20. Game shot. Jim and Mayer the match. picks up Jim his Mayer. first victory of his Super Series campaign. And it's more misery for Davy Kirkwan, who leaves us on two points as well. A decent performance there from Jim Mayer. Not only the victory, but the way in which he did it. A 4 0 will put him in good stead going into tomorrow's action. But we've got two more games still to come your way. Rennie Idams, who is currently top of the table, takes on Tom Becker, who is second. It's a top of the table clash. 21. Can he bookend it with whitewash victories? Double five. Game to do shot. it in style. To do it of a Rene one, two, Idams. one. And Rennie Idams is going to be the table topper overnight. He gets the better of Becker by four legs to nil. Doing so an 82.36 average. A couple of ton plus checkouts on route, as you can see there. Rounded off of a one, two, one checkout as well. He gets the better of Becker by four legs to nil. One final game to go. Steve Brown takes on John Worsley after this short break. Eight years ago. I felt inexperienced then. But maybe now he really does truly fancy the job here at the Super Series. I think Worsley's just hit a nine darter on his practice. Well, I say nine darter. First leg, it's Steve to throw first. One, one, Game on. We <laughs> have John Worsley's day. 41. Missed doubles. And a crucial time there. And so Steve Brown... For a 4 1 win, that would give him a 4 and 1 day. It's tops. Game it's shot victory and the for match. Steve, Brown. Steve Brown. As he gets the better of John Worsley by 4 legs to 1. He... Look at the flow in the arm of Steve Brown. John, you require 40. Double 10. Thirty, and that's kind of been the story of Senior John Worsley's day. 41. Missed doubles, and a crucial time there. And so Steve Brown for a four-one win that'd give him a four-and-one day. It's tops. 
Game it's shot. victory and the for match. Steve Brown. Steve Brown. As he gets the better of John Worsley by 4 next to 1. He lost his opening game of the day against Renny Idens, and he's gone 4 from 4 ever since. He's put in the best performance of the day, the last performance of the day. A 94.64 average, 4 out of 5 on the doubles. Really impressive stuff from Steve Brown to get over the line and to get the better of John Worsley by 4 legs to 1. It's a couple of victories for his day. He'll be looking to make a move on moving day tomorrow, but it is Rene Idams, the cube that can't be told at the minute at the top of the table. We're going to get some thoughts and reflections now of the day up on the balcony with Matthew Edgar and Chris Murphy. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, Steve Brown saving the best until last. Unfortunately, though, John Worsley there saving the best for his practice starts. He saved the best till first, <laughs> didn't he? Yeah. The other way around. Never seen that before, like someone celebrate the practice starts. That's a completely new one on me, and I've watched darts all my life, but... Touch on commentary that you get this quite a lot, especially in the practice room. People with their nine darters that they say, and it's just like a chain of the 140, well, the 180, the 180, and then the 141 or the 177. And then it actually happened in the middle of the match where he ended one leg with a 180, started the next one with a 177, and hit the two trouble twenties. In that sense, in practice, he would have gone for the double 12. And it just makes you think, like, how distracting could that have been? Because he actually opened with two 24s. Absolutely, that bringing an end to the day, a 4-1 win for Steve Brown, who did the business in the match. And we'll get confirmation of all of the 15 results today. Um, look, Rennie Idams is the one to talk about, really, isn't he? Four wins, like Steve Brown out of five, but three of them 4-0. Yeah, and when we look at the line of performance, I don't really think he's played to the level you'd, you'd expect those sort of results. People haven't produced against him. They probably are aware of who he is and what he's achieved so far. And he's produced the right things at the right times. I think the real key performance for me has to go to Steve Brown because his levels improved and increased as the day went on. He ended with the performance of the day of anybody in that last game. And I thought he'd grow into this as well. So it's kind of also going to trend and expectation as well with Steve Brown. So I think for me, Steve Brown's probably the biggest the biggest eye catcher and going into tomorrow I think he's the one to keep the eye on well let's hear what he thinks of that Steve Brown is downstairs with Henry Steve four wins from your day and you got better as the day went along yeah I think that was always my uh, strategy this week that um, I'm not playing as much competitive darts as I used to so I kind of thought in my mind I'm thinking if I get to Wednesday I should start peaking but um I'm quite quite impressed with the, you know, my own performance today, if I, if I can say so. But um, I knew my first game was a disappointment. But moving on from that, um, I think I've got better as the day's gone on. And, and yeah, I feel at home on stage. And as I say, left the best for last. And that performance there at last start against John Worsley, that was impressive, 94 average. Yeah, I was surprised it was that good, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, just, like I said, the first game was, for me, was really slow. I think I was rushing my darts a little bit and didn't feel myself. So... Um, yeah, as the game went on, um, especially against John, I know him quite well. Um, so um, for us, and, and for me, John's a favourite this week. So to beat him and put, keep him on four points was a big bonus. There was a bit of shenanigans before the game got underway. Just describe what happened there. No, yeah, well, obviously uh, John was going up and he, um, he had nine darts as well. So uh, he hit 180-180 and then the referee called um, last three darts. So I said, go on, John, hit it. So uh, he hit the nine darts, yeah, so yeah, he done really well. As far as the rest of the week is concerned, do you feel nice and settled in now? Um, I wouldn't say that, no, because I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, I, my, I know my seeding's really high, but also I'm, I'm capable of having a, a poor game as well because of the lack of practice or competitive practice. So I'll take every game as it comes, but I know I've got the experience and um, you know I'm, I'm more than confident that I'll be on Saturday. Steve, well done. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Yeah, good stuff from Steve Brown there. He sounded like he did play a little bit of a mind game with uh, John Worsley as well there, who he said he sees as favourite, but he egged him on to hit that nine dart. He knew what he was doing, didn't he? I thought it was a bit unusual when I was watching it because Steve Brown was smiling. And I've mentioned earlier that when you get to those last few darts, Steve Brown sort of switches it on. And he wasn't. He was engaging and he was talking and he was smiling. So when he actually then had that reaction, I mean, Steve Brown's been around the game a long time. He's going to know these little bits of wins that he can get. And we've mentioned at the very start of this, it did seem to take Jonathan Worsley out of his stride. He opened with back-to-back -back 24s. It took him a leg or so to even settle into that. And he started to find it back towards the end. But I think that could be one that's worked there. That could be 2 0 to Steve, not just 1 0 on the head to head. Yeah, and it's been all about Brown and Idams so far today. We talked about Rennie just a moment ago, but one thing he did really well was close out those big wins with big checkouts. Yeah, he had some big finishes, and we've had some really big finishes throughout the day. 
I mean, the one-two-one one here, incredible. And he started on the treble 17, which I find quite uh, an unusual sort of shot because he spent so much time spending it on the treble 20 to then switch down to the 70. You've got to go back up to the 20s anyway, because in that situation, 20 for the bullseye would have left it on. But we've seen this a lot, especially from the European players coming over, that they're deciding to do things the opposite way round to the traditional way now, and even coming up with some funky ways. I remember Barry Van Peer a couple of weeks ago, he was going for all sorts of shots around the board. Mm. I was sat with a pen and paper trying to work it out as he went. Right. Two days left to go in this group, but let's have a look at the table after day one. The players we've mentioned there at the top, we've talked about them enough, but Tom Becker on six points in the middle, an interesting position for him. Tom Becker is probably the player that we've probably got so much we could talk about in regards to him. I think the biggest surprise for me is when you look at the legs difference, and he's only on plus one, despite the fact he's got the six points. You'd expect maybe a little bit of a healthier on there, but I think he's going to be really happy with his day. Coming into today, I think when we look at that, we looked at Tom Becker and Jim Mayer as two people and what they've done outside of the Super Series as being players who could potentially really struggle with this. But Tom Mayer has been really good, especially on the finishing and the doubling. I think that's something that's really sort of highlighted towards the back end of the day, running over 50% for his last three matches. That's a real asset and a real strength that he could have. If he could just find a little bit more of the, the gel. He was finding the big scores. He went plenty of 140s and tons. It was the bits in between. If he can find those, he could be competitive. I think getting into Group B would be successful for him. Just before we bring today's coverage to an end, do you think we'll see a lot more movement in this group or do you think there's a possibility that that top two could pull away? No, I think John Wells is going to play his hand. He's too good of a player to sort of be down the bottom end. I expect to at least see him in Group B. He's going to start getting into this at some point along the way. Rennie Idoms, yes, he's picked up those victories, but he's not really played to the levels I would expect for a Group A winner overnight. So he could be a little bit vulnerable at the top end of the table. I think Steve Brown potentially could be a man that moves in there. We're going to see some movement tomorrow, that's for sure. Well, you can watch the action live. Uh, just a reminder, it's on YouTube tomorrow, the Moda Super Series YouTube channel exclusively from 9.30am. Then we'll be back on Sporty Stuff TV for the conclusion of the group at the same time on Wednesday. So thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow.